This episode of Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGOOP to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. I love Big Riley. I know you probably want to record a new one. But anyway, <laughs> welcome back to Ultimate Spider Cast. Week two of our uh, March of the Sandman. <laughs> That's right, it's March. I am Phil, and joining me somewhere over there is... Hey y'all, it's Lil Hellfire. Sorry, no camera today. Uh, yes. Hey, the podcast people won't know the difference. <laughs> but yeah, this one's kind of different because it's... It's part of it. Two parter? <laughs> no, it's it. What? It's a three parter, not a two parter. Well, yeah, but no, it's part. It was. It was uh, from Back in Black storyline, which uh, took place after the original Civil War, before uh, that travesty that was one more day. Uh, so basically, Peter's kind of on the run, and the whole world knows Peter Parker is Spider Man. Yeah. So yeah, it's like you know, it's this time of. Marvel, where everything's an event. You have Back in Black as well as Sandblasted, so it's just like, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and to be equal, it's just to be even more emo. He had to wear the black suits. He's like, oh, everyone knows who I am. Aunt May has been shot. That, that's one tough old bird to kill, though, eh? <laughs> I know. Well, thank God we saved her, so he can like call her every five five issues. <laughs> But I don't know him and him and uh, Mary Jane have been getting closer and closer because I think what was it the was it this last issue of Amazing Spider Man? Uh, I believe she was taking care of him when he was sick. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The start of the great hunt, but pretty soon once we get past our movies, uh, we'll start uh, reviewing the current issues like once a month. Yeah, which I'm excited about. But yeah, tonight we're talking, like I said, this episode we're talking Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man 17, 18, and 19 from April, May, and June 2007. Somebody get Peter David on the phone. I know, because Peter David wrote these. I keep meaning to go back to that that episode. Charlie and I talked to him. I just want to isolate him calling Charlie a dumbass. You still haven't done that? No. Here, Come on, bro. (laughs) Yeah, because I have nothing to do. Anyway. But yes, and of course, it's since we're talking this tonight, it has to be a Sandman issue. <laughs> oh, this cover is great, though. I love it. Yeah, it makes him look like he's a blondie, <laughs> like the way he's squishing his head out of the. But I love this Todd Mock art, especially the black suit. Yeah, that might be my favorite suit. The black suit. I'm a classic girl. What the red and blue? Yeah, and as long as it doesn't have the sugar glider. Mm-hmm. Under, uh, under pit thing, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I love the red and blue too, but I think the black. Uh, it I just has so much baggage now. I loved it when it first came out, but now it's got so much baggage. I love that period back in the day where he was kind of wearing both. Yeah. Ah, the 80s. But um, I, I just love Peter in this issue. He's like, now with all that's happened, the police, the army, everybody's after me. What's the point? What was. Damn it. Long sigh. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> I feel about it sometimes too. Damn you, Tony Stark. He talked. He talked Peter into it, just like he talked many uh, young lady and other things. But <laughs> damn you, Tony Stark. Oh, but did do you remember? Uh, yeah. So Peter's like under. He he's trying to hide, which I don't know why he's not with Mary Jane, but he's uh, basically hiding out as uh, Flash Thompson's assistant coach at the uh, high school. Careful you, there, Peter. And do you remember the alias he's using while he's got the image inducer working? Oh, damn it. That's right. The image inducer. That I swear in my head canon is the same one that pulled through. Yep. Somehow, some way. But do you remember the name he's using? No, what is it? I love Ben Riley. That's, That's what right. I thought, but ben Riley. Seems weird. I get, yeah, there, it, there, a big continuity uh, error here because okay. I, be, I believe Flash Thompson and most of Peter's friends met Ben Riley back in yeah. the nineties. So that's all. Like, just like, yeah, I was like, is this like a time warp? Did we accidentally fall down a pocket dimension? Or 
I mean, I guess, you know, since everyone knows Peter Spider-Man now, the f- I mean, it, you could go just be like, Riley, did you come back from the dead? <laughs> Yeah, this is a weird, I don't know, it's, we, this is a weird uh, little sand, sandblasted arc we've got going on for ourselves. Yeah, so, you know, well, Flash is like, you know, now Flash is super nice to Peter because he knows, you know, his Peter's his hero, Spider-Man. Yeah, which and, was cute. Yeah, so he lets him hide out of his apartment where, where the Sandman shows up. Oh, and I forgot about this, the... Uh, well, I read it a, a, like a little while ago, but then I forgot again. <laughs> this is the no. This is like after the other storyline because you know, not that this is you know influenced by the movies of the time or anything, but Peter's got organic <laughs> web shooters. Yeah. Uh, Won't run out that way, will you? Uh, um. You just gotta drink a lot of. We gotta stay. Hydrated. I was gonna say you must be hell on your boyfriend. Or something. <laughs> just stay hydrated. Uh, so Sandman tells Peter he needs his help. Uh, his his I guess his his father, who he's never close to, is like on death row, about to be executed for a murder he did not commit. Wait, wait! Now it's coming back to me. Is this the weird one with the alternate Uncle Ben? Yeah, because Peter, of course, pulls out the picture of him and Aunt May and Uncle Ben and says, you know, this man taught me about great power and great responsibility. And Sandman's like, wait a minute. This is the guy who, you know, who yeah, my dad was accused of killing. I really wish they hadn't put that in the movie. It was annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's why Peter David did this. But, yeah. Well, at least that continuity's gone. But, uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> Well, it's like you don't have to tie every single thread together. It's like in that Michael Keaton Batman, the Joker didn't kill his parents. I know. You Although don't... at the time, I did like it. Yeah, yeah, but that I mean, movie how... it made sense. For this, it doesn't. You can have an arch enemy that you haven't known your whole entire life. That's all. <laughs> or who didn't kill your parents or your uncle or something? Yeah, look at Lex and Superman. Yeah, I mean, well, they used to be tied together. What? as teenagers, but yeah. John Byrne they met as adults and they're still yeah, meeting each other. That's, everybody knows that's, that's where we take from. <laughs> anyway, no, yeah, this is um, I don't know, I like some things about this story and then the Uncle Ben thing is what really just kind of like sticks in my car a little bit. But well, there was everything like, else is pretty good about that. Yeah, then there's a big mystery because there was two Uncle Bens running around. One was murdered, one killed the Spider-Man of the year 2211. Uh, yeah, go back and read other Peter David friendly name for Spider Man issues. <laughs> I want to know what he was smoking. Yeah, yeah, if we ever get him on the on the phone, <laughs> I'll be like, I'll be like, I don't know, that, no, 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 I'll be with my other co host. That dumbass won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have even further out there strange theories, so don't you worry. <laughs> as long as you, as long as you, you don't believe that. Uh, I don't know, the Crimson Bands of Sidorak have something to do with the Juggernaut or something. Yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> and then, of course, Peter David brings in one of his favorite characters in the second issue, because Peter uses the image inducer to look like Jamie Madrox. The multiple men. I mean, I mean, if you can, if you can do it, do it. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's like you're trying to keep a low profile. I mean, it could have just looked like any random FBI agent, but he's like, yeah, Jamie Madrox. <laughs> And since Sandman can shift this shape, he just like makes himself look like uh, someone else, and Peter calls him Agent Sands. God. Funny uh, business. Oh, so Peter David. But yeah, that's why that doesn't have to take herself so seriously. Yeah. But that's when the image inducer dies. Gotta charge that battery. Everybody knows that except for Pete. <laughs> and I love how he's wearing he I mean, it looks cooler, but he's still wearing the mask. It's like everyone knows who you are, dude. <laughs> ah, branding. Yeah, yeah. Especially in the Marvel universe. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, then we get more of course uh, on again always on again, off again, Flash Thompson and Betty Brandt. <sighs> <sighs> Betty. Yeah, you know, I heard that Betty was a floozy. Just like her cousin. <laughs> what? Just like her cousin. Her cousin? No, I'm just kidding. 
you know, that floozy from the last issue we talked about. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Oh, please. She gets around Flash Thompson. There was at least an issue, too, where she's, like, flirting with Ben Riley. Uh, Wait, this one had, like, some extra stuff surrounding it, didn't it? It had what? Like, this one had, like, some of those, like, um, like, the web log and stuff was kind of connected to, to this one, right? I'm trying to think. I just feel like, yeah. There's more to the story, but it's not really, but it is. And but that, that evil spider spider lady person was like, you know, like yeah. Flash Thompson, so she was like trying to make Betty look like she was crazy or on drugs or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, just the end when Spider-Man and Sandman find uh, the dude in the van who he took uh, the Spider-Man of the Future's helmet. Oh yeah, and they could see the the evil Uncle Ben killing. You know, all I have to say is Hobgoblin twenty two eleven, bro. <laughs> oh Lord, <what's> <laughs> we're gonna do some Hobgoblin la- later in the year, but we're gonna have to <laughs> eventually. We're gonna do some Spider Man twenty ninety nine. We'll do all kinds of future stuff. And- <laughs> That's all I can think about right now. It's just like my blood's just slowly boiling. <laughs> I know, because, like, <clears throat> I mean, I know I like it when he fights guys with powers, but I like it when Spider-Man kind of stays, like, more street level, but you're when you're thrown in, like, I mean, I like Spider-Verse, well, well the movie more than the comic, but it's, like, <laughs> when you start get, doing other realities and time travel, I'm just like, <clears throat> that's, that's fine every so often, but keep Spider-Man up. Uh, I love how they low key call Peter kind of dumb, especially like in uh, what is it, issue eighteen, where he's like, I don't know, I'm not really a detective, bro. Yeah. It's like, oh god, forensic science, anybody? No, no, okay. Somebody get Barry Allen on the phone, I guess. Well, that's like the weird thing. It's like they like to play. <laughs> That's the thing with Peter. Like, like the brain is there when they need it, but uh, other times they, I don't know, for just for plot convenience or something, they play down his in- intelligence. It's yeah, yes, you know, very inconsistent. Well, I guess you're gonna get inconsistent when you're like in at least three to four books a month for like fifty, fifty some years. So true. Looking at you, Batman. Oh. Stay tuned. <laughs> That one thousand issue. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. So yes, the the magic future helmet takes them to this to the other Uncle Ben. Wait, wait, say that part again because it sounds ridiculous even for a comic book. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Remember, Peter David. Ah, uh, the the, the the futuristic helmet is going to lead them to the evil Uncle Ben. <laughs> Hulk smash. <laughs> and, and they're riding in the back of the guy's van. Ruh, ruh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, because they even make that reference in uh, issue 19. Yeah. Because uh, cause what Sandman says, all we need is a talking Great Dane. And Spider-Man says, okay, I'll get to be Fred. And the guy driving says, I get to be Shaggy. And he's like, Sandman's like, who do I get to be? One of the broads? No way. <laughs> and Spider-Man says, well, the only one left is Scrappy. <laughs> Nobody likes that video. man's like, that's a good name. Which one was that? And Spider Man says, the obnoxious, sawed off puppy. <laughs> be Casper if you can be Casper. That's the cool cousin in the Scooby Doo family. Casper? Yeah. The, what, the friendly ghost? No, no, no. He has a cousin oh. named Casper. He's the great oh, does he? one. Yeah. Oh, okay. That might be Scooby Doo be after your time. <laughs> Maybe. I was going to say, if you want to be Casper, just kill Richie Rich. Oh! <gasps> Basically, that's my head can do. <laughs> Goes to rich, rich. Anyway, and of course, uh, for convenience of plot, again they uh, move up the execution date for Sandman's father. Yeah, I mean, but I, the, the thing that kills me about issue eighteen is that when we start with the flashback to Forest Hill Cemetery, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Okay. Well, my thing with Peter David's like arc on this book is like it keeps coming back to the high school because Peter was teaching there, 
you know, there was a storyline with Mysterio, and now it's the back here for the Sandman. And you know what they say about high school and why it's so great? You what? get older, and the girls stay the same age. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, can't resist that one since you since you brought it up, Funny nerd. Oh no, no, no! There will be no fighting about that. That was creepy. <laughs> Uh, Anywho, yeah. But then they get attacked by the principal. Uh, As you do. <laughs> and Troublemakers, then, get it. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> then we see another Sandman. Then we see the spider, the supposedly dead Spider-Man of 2211. <sighs> and he turns back into the principal. So, of course, and then he, he's the evil Uncle Ben, of course, because why? Do you remember who he was? Was it the chameleon? I feel like he's the future chameleon from twenty twenty. Yeah, he had Jesse's yeah. DNA and morph into him. And I'm just like, this is like turning into body horror. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't read Spider Man for body horror. Okay, <laughs> because he's the one who killed the alternate Uncle Ben, who yeah. came from a timeline where Peter. I know Charlie's going. What's going on? <laughs> yes, he killed a, 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 a Uncle Ben from an alternate timeline. He came. He where. Aunt May had been killed instead of Uncle Ben, and Spider Man stayed in show business. And after a while, just stopped talking to Uncle Ben. But like, yeah, this is this is insane. But we're not gonna talk about how Betty distracted Flash and caused him to wreck a police car. Like they're sitting in the car. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <just>, whoa. <laughs> no, her head's up. Never. <laughs> <laughs> But no, oh, and then, and my, I think my favorite panel is like when um, Miss Arrow appears and she's like hiding in the stall, and I'm just like, um, did we check to make sure you're in the right? <laughs> <laughs> just gonna throw that out there. Oh, in issue 18, yeah, she texts Betty. She's like sitting in the bathroom stall, like talking on the phone. Gross. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Bring a book like a civilized person. <laughs> So yes, it was the it was a future chameleon who killed the alternate uncle oh, Peter David. Take me, Take you're giving me a headache. Give me a headache, Uncle Ben. Okay, so one more time for those in the cheap seats, Charlie Esser. The evil future chameleon killed the alternate timeline Uncle Ben. And by ingesting his DNA, we won't say how he got that DNA. <laughs> anyway, and uh, yeah, that's when Sandman's father came. It just happened to come along, and and they saved him just in the nick of time. Spoilers: the busiest alleyway in New York. <laughs> I mean, you would think it was Gotham for goodness' sakes. <laughs> and, the, and then the future chameleon takes his true form, looks like a red demon thing on this. Honestly, this looks like um, Spider-Man meets Alien, I'm just going to say. What's I going to say? Maybe he's an alien. Because I was going to say, I don't know if he ever tells us what he is, but yeah, he might be an alien. I mean, more f- present Marvel Universe, they have aliens. I'm sure in 2211, they did, they have plenty. Are they Kree? Are they Skrull? Or... <laughs> and so... Again, uh, convenient plot device. Uh, they take the helmet of the Spider-Man from 2211, put it on the future chameleon's head, and Spider-Man tells it to administer justice. So just as Sandman's father is going to get killed in the electric chair, it teleports the evil chameleon and swaps him with Sandman's father. So Just in the nick of time, you know. So, and, but the, and the even creepier part is he reverts to his Uncle Ben form, so it looks like they gave Uncle Ben the chair. Yeah. Everybody get that? There will be a quiz later. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Lila stayed up all night studying for her pee test. <laughs> Actually, I was studying for our Mr. Miracle. I don't know why now. <laughs> I felt like. Tomorrow. Had- tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. Tomorrow. So yeah, so so I guess so, what's Sandman's father gonna do? Just go into hiding or something? They never, you know, we I don't think we ever see the Sandman's father again after this issue. We don't. So I guess he just goes into hiding. Oh, okay. He's I'll wherever mother. Harry was in Europe for all that time. Then. True. True. I mean, I guess I guess the life of a fugitive is better than being dead. But 
So they so they never clear his father's name, but I mean, they he's did. He's free though. Yes, That's they did the free matters. him. They did free him. The real killer got the chair, but still, yeah. <laughs> they're like, ah, oh, one more, one more day's coming. Brand new day's coming. Exactly. I do feel like during that time, everybody was just like, eh, what does it matter? Eh. Go nuts, Peter David. <laughs> Everyone's going to forget Pete Spider-Man anyway. Just go nuts. But there was a good issue in, during this run where, uh, you know, while everyone still remember, you knew Pete was Spider-Man where he had a confrontation with Jameson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in like a boxing ring. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a YouTube. Oh, Peter <laughs> David. Why, why did I, I heard, it's, it's funny because I heard on a uh, podcast recently, uh, Clone Saga Chronicles, I believe. Uh, oh my god. What? Why would you ever? <laughs> Guys, do, do, gentlemen, do good work. But no, I believe they were saying, um, I guess Peter David originally wasn't going to do the Jameson confrontation. He, uh, well, I guess he thought Straczynski was going to do it because he was writing Amazing at the time. And I guess he, Straczynski had no plans for it. So Peter David's like, can I do it? <laughs> Noise. Hey, take the, you know. I mean, who has a, I mean, let's be real. JJ does have a punchable face. <laughs> right in that Hitler mustache. <laughs> <gasps> oh, they could read, they could, they could have reenacted that Captain America number one cover. <gasps> Missed oh, opportunities, bro. Oh, Marvel, I just gave you a variant. Oh my god. Uh, speaking of variants. <laughs> What Detective Comics one thousand has eighty variants, and Mister Miracle had, as I found out, has quite a lot of variants as well. Oh, really? Yeah, I what think it's like issue two has a lot, like has like three or four variants, and then it's a couple other issues. I was going to say it can't be anywhere near Detective one thousand. Oh no, no, no! But I told, I told you, I told Tyler, I told Charlie when Action Comics one thousand came out that they were going to milk Detective way yeah. more than they're going to do Action. But like, let's just be real though. Hmm. Superman is more iconic than Batman, so and I feel like they were like they were trying to be reasonable, and then they realized that a lot of people, myself included, did buy all the covers. Yeah, but nobody's buying all eighty covers. I'm sorry, I don't care. If I don't know. I don't know. For some reason, I think Batman's more popular, or they think he's more popular, just maybe because he's just more relatable. Well, popular, but like in, in a couple of years, if they keep it at the rate that they're going with all the books, well, if they're cutting them down. But of course, they'll be back. They'll creep back up in numbers again. But oh yeah, once you know, if this, yeah. as the numbers go up, there. I'm just saying, Superman is more iconic. That property is worth more, movie wise, and, and things like that. And that's why we don't ha we haven't had a Superman show in forever. But yet we have Gotham and stuff like that. So I'm just like, so they should have just done ten covers and called it a day. Yeah, one for each decade, yeah. And, you know, and, like, some superstar, rock star, artist, or in a blank variant. Oh, so annoyed. I cannot wait to read it, though. Oh, yeah, me too. But anyway, that anyway gets this, this particular to... arc, Sandblasted, it's about a B-. minus. Uh, I don't know if I agree with you. I kind of want to bump it up to a B, but there were so many weird things. So many here. questions and, and like that, that, that ex machina, like and like and like I said, just that ending, I was just like, yeah, I really didn't wrap a lot. I mean, yeah, the killer got brought to justice, but <laughs> the answers. Again, I don't know if it was just that. Oh yeah, you know, things are getting kind of you're kind of getting a soft reboot with one more day. So psh, knock yourself out. Yeah, Spider Man from twenty two eleven. Yeah, go ahead. Alternate <laughs> Uncle Ben's. Psh, knock yourself out, kid. I'm telling you, though, if Marvel ever actually does go, like, bankrupt and there has to be a last Spider-Man, I'm telling you, if Uncle Ben hasn't been alive the whole time and is secretly the real kingpin of New York, I don't know what we're doing. I don't even think we've had a what if like that. Like, like that is the one person that stays dead in comics is Uncle Ben. And it pisses oh, yeah. me off. <laughs> oh, I did, hear, I did hear another argument on that, I think on that same podcast today that, uh, and they convinced me. Green Goblin is Spider-Man's greatest villain. You know why? Why? Well, think about it. He killed Gwen. Okay. He killed Ben Riley. Okay. And he basically killed their daughter. Well, you mean it's the reason why he's my favorite villain, kind of, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> why actually killed Ben Riley? And Gwen. 
Oh, so yeah, it's not Danny Boyd at the time, but like I like alternate versions of Lynn, just not where she was with Peter at that time. And yes, I know Charlie Esser, Doc Ock. I was gonna say, it. yeah, don't say the name. He might write them a sternly worded letter. I know Doc Ock basically killed Peter and took his place, but I mean, who, who's that? Just more- means he wants to be him. It's some homoerotic subtext, which I'm fine with. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Saying he wanted to be in Peter's body. So bad. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, seriously, when you think about it, who's done more damage to Peter and the people around him? He, the Mormon? I mean, he has his arch nemesis. Like, yeah. I mean, and he basically twisted Harry, his best friend, in, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame they never really, um, like, I don't know, like, everybody thinks Hobgoblin's kind of a joke. And Green Goblin's a joke. And it's, as it's the suit, let's just be real. Purple and yeah. green really, um, might as well be green and orange, you know? <laughs> Well, it's like they, it's, I think it's just the way they write Norman. It's like they kind of want him to be like a con, I mean, they, they kind of want him to be a combo of Lex and, and the Joker. Joker. Yeah, and it's kind of hard to balance it. Go one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah. But Sam, yeah, I just like, he's one of those rogues that I'm just like, eh. <laughs> the first time out, he beat him with a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I don't know. Like, how do you, how- I mean, I would come back for vengeance just because it's ridiculous and embarrassing. <laughs> you suck, Spider Man. No, I sucked you up. Wait, crazy. whoa, <laughs> crazy, crazy. <laughs> and there's my drop. Eh, I've had worse. <laughs> and there's another drop. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, um, I want to, I, I wish somebody who's like a diehard Sp- Sandman, cause I know there's, there's something for everybody. So if there's a diehard Sandman fan out there, please write to us and let us know <laughs> what it is. Well, it's, it's kind of hard cause there's a big gap if you like Sandman as a villain because, you know. For, and there's like, more than one Sandman too, so. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, like for all of the nineties, basically, he was like a, you know, he was reformed. He was like a hero. Like a hero, well, you we're using well, he was the a term reserve, hero loosely here. He, he was a reserve. He was a reserve Avenger, as we talk about on the Quantum Zone. And stay tuned for the one year uh, celebration of that. And then he worked for Silver Sable. Which what about the Quantum Zone? <laughs> it's coming up on its one year anniversary. What about our Quasar podcast, the Quantum Zone? What about our Quasar podcast? Might as well just play them quantum, off for a little. Quantum uh, tentacles. Yes. And I'm visiting nursing home with bad intention. <laughs> I love that one. <sighs> on. All right, have we done enough damage here? Because I mean, we talked, we talked these issues. We talked Detective Comics one thousand. We, now we're talking Quantum Zone. Yeah, yeah. I could do this all day, Captain America. Oh, so glad, so glad people have volunteered to take to to be tribute for me. <laughs> oh, for Captain Marvel. Yeah. And I understand it'll be okay if it's just you and I talking Shazam. I, I get it. The, cool, <gasps> the coolest movie of the year is not for everybody. You know Charlie Esser, if he has the money, he'll go see it. And I'm sure Ty, you know, <laughs> if Tyler has the time to join us, he'll talk it. Okay. And I think our movie club friends will talk and discuss it. <clears throat> okay. Alright. So... Gonna get out of here. Si, senor. <laughs> Vamos. Put on our put on our future helmets and get out of here. All right, I end up in an electric chair. <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, join us next time as we discuss Amazing Spider-Man six fifteen and six sixteen from the brand new day era. <laughs> um, and send us your thoughts on because after that we're going to be doing of course we have to do live commentary for Spider-Man 3 <laughs> the Sandman I, uh, I may or may not be drunk and we'll have to see how it goes <laughs> hell I might be drunk for that <laughs> hell, I mean, love from your son and your wife I know Sand, sand yeah, Sandman, Gwen Stacy um Little twink venom. Anyway, uh, send your thoughts on all that. Capes and Lunatics at gmail.com. Uh, follow us, facebook.com slash ultimate spidercast at ult spidercast on Twitter and at CL Sidekicks. Uh, CL Sidekicks on Instagram. The gram is as old people like Will's call it. And the voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you for joining us. And remember, make sure your image inducers are charged. <laughs> remember, what electricity in those image inducers is not the electric chair. Alright, everyone. Swing back here next time.